Do you ever find yourself overwhelmed by emotion? Yes. Yes, it does happen. I would love to start with you, Nina, and ask you a little bit about uh, this partnership of these uh, incredibly uh, creative and uh, towering women. And uh, <laughs> it's complex and incredibly authentic relationship that I believed. Uh, I mean, I, it feels really real to me. And I wonder if you would talk a little bit about creating that partnership on screen. You know, I, I, I looked at it and I thought, who are, who is that person that wants to be the partner of someone who is such a light figure, such a genius in what uh, she does? And, and what do you see yourself? What is your part in that relationship? And what do you want to maybe also get out of that relationship? And where I think where these two really meet and love each other and respect each other immensely is in this field of music. Mm -hmm. And I think for Sharon, for both of them, having the most important positions in an orchestra you can have. Uh, and both do it in a different way because their personalities are different and for me it was very important to to tell and also to enhance uh, 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 Lydia in the sense that she is very different Sharon Sharon is the one who creates the floor who who basically does the groundwork so that she can come in and just do her magic and that's really Sharon has no problem with that that's how she sees the partnership. And that's also maybe the transactional thing within it. But through that, they really deeply love each other and uh, uh, are happy to spend time with each other up to maybe this moment in time where we actually get to know them in the film. Their the little breaks maybe doesn't have so much to do really with the relationship itself but in the place that Lydia is when we get to know her and what she's dealing with uh, within herself and with everything around her and so that was to me important that Sharon can also get the side out of Lydia that she can relax a little that you feel there she is if she could go with it she would be safe <laughs> you know mm -hmm. <laughs> that she doesn't do it is uh, <laughs> another thing but um yeah that that but they meet in this love of making music and that's everything to both of them wonderful thank you for that mm -hmm. uh, Kate I it struck me watching the film that Todd set this up in um, in a way where we first see Lydia in various forms of performance whether it's on stage in an interview or at a business luncheon or teaching at Juilliard uh, etc and I and then there's the unraveling. And I wonder if you would talk about playing those layers of performance. It's it's really complex. Yes, I mean, definitely. I mean, I think all the characters are really complex. And um, uh, Todd was very big on backstory, yeah. you know, what had gone before this moment. Um, and the fact that you can't forget, like every other human being on the planet, they're emerging from the pandemic they're emerging from a from a time when they could not play music mm -hmm. so there's a certain air of tension but also expectation and release that they're going back into the world so everyone is slightly trying to find their feet again together um uh and Lydia is like that too and I think also she's about to turn 50 you know she's about to finally get to the moment of um along with Sharon who leads the orchestra and the or you know the orchestra themselves to record the last of Mahler's symphonies to get the box set you know so she's very focused on legacy um and I think that the thing I found really interesting and perhaps I could relate to in my own small way having run a very large cultural institution in Australia um, with my husband um is that that she is running a massive institution. And so what happens when, you know, she's given that and part of that incredible power structure, what it estranges her from the making of music. So somehow in the relationship, Nina, um, that Nina's character and my character are, are in, they're slightly estranged from the thing that got them together in the first place. And Lydia herself is estranged from, from the why 
And I think um, that's a lot of things that a lot a thing that people can really understand. I think you don't have to be a musician to understand mm. that particular experience at the moment. Mm. I think we all feel slightly outside ourselves. You mentioned legacy, and uh, that's a word not often reserved for women so much, uh, mm-hmm. especially here in the United States. Um, and uh, Lydia is a towering figure of creative genius and gets accolades most often bestowed on men. And then even up to the point where I'm watching her manipulation, I mean, her relationship with Francesca, and maybe I'm off base, but I felt a little Petra von Kant, uh, that <laughs> there was a little thing with Francesca. And we see her manipulations and her uh, predilections. And I was still there with her. I wanted her to win. Um, mm-hmm. And I felt by the end, she was almost genderless in in a way, which I, I found really fascinating. Obviously, you know, she's a, a woman and she's a lesbian, which is important. Um, but I wonder if you'd speak to how she kind of transcends gender at some point, or even if that yeah. resonates for you. I mean, look, it's different for everybody. I don't know about you, but I never, ever think about my gender mm-hmm. until it becomes, it's brought up to me as a defining characteristic Mm. or a door is closed in my face because of it. Mm. And I think that Lydia, and I hazard to guess Sharon, too, believes in the power of being the exception. So, you know, she's run this fellowship, the accordion fellowship that is to help mentor young female conductors. And she thinks, okay, well, that moment's passed. Why can't we just be conductors? Why can't I, why does me standing on the podium every single time have to be a political act? I'm a musician, you know, mm-hmm. I want to be a musician. I don't want to, I don't want to self-identify via my sexuality or my gender first and foremost, um, in the way that that men don't don't necessarily have to within the the traditional confines of the classical music world. So um I I yeah, I think it's it, and that's what I loved about how Todd described the relationship. It just was. Yeah. It didn't, exactly. it wasn't particularly remarkable mm. Mm. that that it was a same-sex relationship. You know, mm. it was just was. It was um yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Well, I, I've been asked to wrap. Um, think- <laughs> it's so difficult, isn't it? It's like two and a half minutes. <laughs> just, just, just. I, I had one more I was going to try to sneak in, but they, they yeah, got you do. Sneak it in. Well, it's for Nina. Okay, <laughs> it is for Nina. And I, I did want to just ask you, Nina, um, I also think, uh, you know, as, as a viewer, that the film is investigating this idea of separating the art from the artist and, uh, you know, a conversation that's come up especially in the Me Too era, et cetera. And uh, I wonder if you could speak a little bit to that aspect of the film, because, you know, Lydia is a genius no matter what. Uh, and so is Sharon. Uh, so I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the idea of excavating uh, that, you know, the art from the artist. I don't, I'm not sure if I understand the question, I'm afraid. Well, can you what, separate, separate someone's actions yeah. That they that they that they make in in order oh, to try and make great it's art, and like like this conversation about badly. Bach yeah. and, and and all this. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. I, I need the language is different. <laughs> no, it's complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it, you know what I love about this whole project is that no one gives an answer and that all these questions are being raised and we can start the conversation. But as the one being in it, I don't really want to interpret what Lydia says and give you some that you should experience it yourself because that is what I love about it. Yes. That we all deal with all these questions, exactly what you're talking about. And you think you have made up your mind and then you listen to her uh, uh, argumentation and you listen to the boys and you have to position yourself and it's mm. not easy <laughs> because right. you learn about it's all always it, it it has to do with what your experience are where do you come from what you, that informs what you think about mm. these kind of topics and that and that we don't interpret it for you. I think it's crucial, you know. So I don't really want to give. I have a personal opinion to to things, obviously, but I find it so beautiful here that I also have to question myself again 
you know that, that's what the film does it, it says no no think think about it again is this really what you think uh, you know and that um that's maybe what what i uh, would say yeah i love that answer thank you because i i relate mm -hmm. to that very much um, okay great yeah uh, that thank position. you uh thank you so much to both of you i i thank really you. adored the film i can't wait to see it again oh great, great. That, that's the biggest thank compliment. you thank yeah you. Thank you.